church kids, it's Kendall. I need your help. Today I am making a very important decision, okay? I want to hear you guys answer a few questions. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, Pop-Tarts or toaster strudels? Let me hear you, which one? Okay, good, good. I, I like Pop-Tarts too. Okay, we're gonna go with Pop-Tarts. Now, the tricky part, which flavor Pop tart. You got strawberries, you got s'mores, you got cinnamon, you got birthday cake, Oreo. Are you serious? There's so many choices. How do you pick one? We have to do it. We have to pick one, church kids. So let me hear which flavor Pop tart I should be eating for breakfast today. Louder, loud. There's a lot of mix up. Strawberry, strawberry Oreo. That's that's not a thing. Okay. That one, I like it. I like it, church kids. Okay, we're gonna go with that flavor. Now, the tricky part, do you, church kids, eat this room temperature, approximately hmm, 68 degrees, or do you put it in your toaster and make it nice and ooey gooey and melty? All right, which one is it on the count of three? You guys tell me which one, room temperature or toaster? One, two, three. Perfect, I love room temperature Pop-Tarts. That's what we're going with today. Now, uh, how do you eat your Pop-Tart? Do you break it in half? Do you eat all the crust around it before you get to the best part? I like to just break it in half and eat it like a sandwich. Mmm, wow, church kids, this is, you guys helped me pick some of the best breakfasts I have had in a long, long time. Okay, now, I'm gonna go enjoy my Pop-Tart while you guys listen to Mr. Damon's message. Hey, church kids, it's Mr. Damon, and today we get to go to, aha! The Bible. Now, church kids, can I tell you something? The Bible is the greatest book ever written. But we do not read this book to become better people. Do you know that? We do not read the Bible because it makes God love us more. No! He, he, he can't love us more because he already loves us 100%. No. The reason why the Bible is great, it's not because it's chubby and has lots of pages or has this funny tail like a puppy. <laughs> no, that is not why we love the Bible. The reason why we love the Bible is because everything inside here points us to Jesus. We love Jesus. And because of that, we read the Bible to learn more about who he is and how he's created us to live. And do you know what, church kids? Mm. Do you know God has created you to make good decisions? Do you know that Jesus wants to help you make great choices? So in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, whoop, oh, oh, the Bible says this. In it, it says, as Jesus grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. The favor of people increased upon his life, for he was loved greatly by God. That's amazing. Can I just substitute you in here for Jesus? Listen to this, church kids. As you grow, so will your wisdom and maturity. The favor of people is increasing on your life. Why? For you are loved greatly by God. Holy schmolies! That's the coolest thing ever. Well, today we are talking about good decisions, good choices. But first, it's time, oh yeah, for the question of the week! And the question of the week is this. Church kids, have you ever, ah, uh, <laughs> oh, 
made a bad decision? Have you ever made a bad decision before? I have. Trust me. I have made many bad decisions, church kids. Let me tell you about one. There was this time I was in school and I was in a science class and the teacher was asking all these crazy hard questions like, mm, class, what does laser stand for? And I'm like, laser stand? It's just a word. And he's like, no, it's not. Laser actually stands for light amplification of emitted radiation. Whoa ha ha. I'm like, what? It really stands for that? It's like, yes, but I didn't know it. There were so many things I didn't know in this class, and so one day we had to take a test, and all the kids around me seemed like they knew the answer, but I was like, I felt so terrible because I didn't know the answers, and so you know what I did? I made a super bad decision to cheat on the test. Bum, bum, bum. It's true. I looked over and I started copying my neighbor's answers. Church kids, was that a good choice? No, no, it wasn't. There was another time where I was going to do a big project for my uncle. And he was going to pay me money and I was going to work for him. And he cut this huge hedge, this big bush, and there was all these crazy leaf piles everywhere. And it was my job to clean them all up. And that sun was out and it was hot. I wanted to go play with my friends. And so I wanted to quit right then and there. In fact, I asked my uncle if I could, and he was like, no, you can't. I made the decision that I wanted to quit the job. Church kids, have you ever made a bad decision before? Chances are I think the answer is probably yes. Now, when we make bad decisions, like lying to our parents, beating up our little brother or sister, or taking something that doesn't belong to us, does it usually work out well? Does it? Really? Really? No, of course not! We wind up getting in trouble, and we get grounded, or we get caught, and oh boy, church kids. Making bad decisions is not a great thing. And do you know that Jesus loves you so much, his love for you is so big, that he wants to help you make great decisions. Well, how do we do that? How do we make good decisions? Because I gotta be honest, there's a lot of times I feel like making bad ones. Well, the answer is this. Jesus, when he was your age, when he was a church kid, the Bible says this about him. It says that Jesus grew, and as he grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. Church kids, Jesus is our example. The way that he lived life is the way that he wants to help us live life. So does God look at you and go, hey you, you better make good choices or else, mm, is that the way God treats us? No way. Does God look at us and say, hey, you better try harder and you better not do bad things or else I'm going to be angry. Ah! God's not like that at all. Jesus became a church kid. He became a human being. He lived this life perfect, church kids. And then he died on the cross and he rose from the dead, not only to forgive us of all of the bad things we've ever done or will ever do, not only to restore our best friendship with God, but do you know that God's love is so powerful and it's so big that he wants to fill you with the power to be able to make the choices he wants you to make. It's true. And in fact, he's given us a bunch of things to help us. I'm like, what? What did Jesus give me to help make good choices? Number one, the first thing that Jesus has given to you to empower you and help you make good choices is your conscience. That's right. It's that little voice in your head that says, hey, it's probably not a good idea to take your little sister's dolls and cut off all their hair. And you're like, hmm, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Church kids, you have a conscience. It's that little feeling on the inside of you when you're thinking about doing something wrong and you start to feel uneasy. 
and you start to get those butterflies and you start thinking to yourself, I don't know if this is a good idea. Do you know what that is? Church kids, that is the Holy Spirit. That is God speaking to you, saying, hey, this is not a good choice. I'm helping you to say no to what is not good for you and the people around you and to say yes to what is. That's the Holy Spirit helping you make a good decision. And not only does God give us a conscience, but you know what else he gets us, gives us? He gives us the Bible. Church kids, when we read the Bible, it tells us incredible things about how God wants us to treat other people. It tells us about how God wants us to live and how he is helping us to be the person he's created us to be. We, we read the Bible, not to get to God, rewind, we don't read the Bible to get God to love us more. Church kids, one of the things we read the Bible for is to see how God created us to live. So not only has he given us a conscience, which is the Holy Spirit, not only has he given us the Bible, but he's also given us parents. Church kids, one of the reasons why you have parents is so that you don't die, okay? Your mom and dad have kept you alive all these years, all right? Otherwise, you'd be like living in the woods by yourself with a pack of wolves, like in a hole in the ground with like tree branches as clothes. Church kids, you'd be eating grass and dirt for food. It would be terrible. No, God has given you parents because he loves you. You'd be like, I don't know, but sometimes my parents don't let me do what I want to do. I know, it's actually good for us to be told no sometimes. Otherwise, all the food we would eat would be candy. We would never go to bed. We would never go to school. And we would die young as super crazy, overweight, ignorant people. Church kids, you have parents because God loves you. And so when your parents tell you no, when your parents say, hey, did you tell the truth? When your parents say, hey, you didn't do what I asked you to do, church kids, it's not because they're mad at you. It's because God is using our moms and dads to teach us how to make good choices on our own. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Not only do we have a conscience, not only do we have the Bible, and not only do we have our parents, church kids, here's the best part. We have God's love. God's love is so big and it's so powerful that when we say yes to him and when we say, Jesus, I need your help. God, I'm not making really good choices right now. Will you help me make good decisions? God's love is so big. It fills us with the ability and the power to do what we could never do on our own. Church kids, does Mr. Damon have the strength and the power and the wisdom to do what God wants me to do all the time? Mm -mm. No, but does the Holy Spirit on the inside of me have the power to do that? Yes. Do you have the ability on your own to make good choices? No, you don't. But does Jesus on the inside of you? Yes, he does. And so instead of going, oh, I need to make better choices, we stop and go, I can't make better choices but Jesus can. And then we turn our attention off of ourself. We look back to the one who can do it for us and we say, Jesus, I need your help. So have you been making some poor choices recently? Has your attitude not been so great? Then church kids, good news. Because when we aren't strong enough to do what we know we should do, Jesus on the inside of us is. And will you do this for just one second? Will you close your eyes and let's talk to Jesus together? Will you say this after me? Say, Jesus, thank you for giving me the power to do what I know is right. I want to grow and mature just like you did. Help me to make good choices. Amen. Church kids, just like Jesus, the Bible says this, that God helped Jesus grow and mature, and he's helping you grow and mature. Why? Because you are greatly loved by God.